Now that your software is ready, how do you go about having remote users test it? We'll discuss what remote user testing is and how it can be super useful to you and your business. This is Alex here for JotForm. Hope you're all having a great day. Let's get started. What is remote user testing? Remote user testing is a way of conducting research. You start by pooling a variety of people from different countries with an incentive. Then your users are presented with a set of tasks that can be completed remotely. Then as users go through the tasks, you are able to record their screen and voice, depending on what software you're using, to watch how your participants interact with your website, app, or product. You can watch the recording back and take note of how various people are interacting with your product. It's also important to test to see if your software works on a variety of different devices, from iPhones to Android, MacBook Pros to a first-generation iPad. If you're trying to test your software with a variety of different people using a variety of different devices, then remote usability testing is an effective, practical way to go. Let's go over the pros and cons of collecting research this way. For starters, it's incredibly easy to reach your target audience for testing. Websites like usertesting.com make it simple to pick and choose users that best match your target audience. With remote usability testing, you aren't bound by time and place. You can send tasks to people in different countries and time zones. Then your test videos will be made available to you as soon as your users complete them. You can also test your software on a wide variety of devices. And even if there's a certain device that your software won't function on, you can choose your testers based on what devices they're using. With remote user testing, you've got to fire and forget it. Once you send a test to a user, it's out of your hands. This allows for a completely authentic experience. If you were to hover over their shoulder, they might act differently and change how they complete the tasks. Testing users remotely allows them to complete the tasks from wherever they're most comfortable and supplying you with the most accurate results. You're also getting results from real people and potentially customers. Your lab is a regulated environment. It's a better idea to have a tester trying to test your software in their personal environment because that's where they'll actually be using it. It's also extremely budget-friendly to complete user testing remotely. Now let's get into some of the potential cons. Incentivizing your users is a good idea, but it can be a con. People who are solely motivated by money might not take the testing as seriously as you'd like them to. They might rush through the test and not provide the most authentic results. You also need to decide when you need qualitative and quantitative data. You may think you need thousands of different people to test your software, but that isn't always true. Sometimes all you need is a small amount of quality data rather than a huge amount of data that you don't actually need. If a problem is that serious, even a small group of users will make it apparent. Now let's talk about how to conduct remote user tests. Make sure that you understand the purpose behind your research. What do you want to know? Would you like to know if your product performs as intended or if the content communicates your message effectively? Would you like to learn how others see your brand from their perspective or how your product performs within other brands? Its weakness and strengths? Set your goals and key success indicators, KSIs, so that you can clearly benchmark your results. Next, you need to figure out your target audience. And please remember, you can't target everyone. There's no such thing as an average user that covers every single person. You need to narrow your search down to a specific group. Also, keep in mind that your user is not a robot trying to learn every detail of your software. They're normal people with individual agendas and perspectives. Figure out if your software requires previous knowledge from your users. Do you need to teach a few things before they can get going with your test scenario? Or can the user intuitively learn what they need to do without any guidance? You wouldn't ask someone to test to drive a car without a driver's license, right? Your user should have domain knowledge first. Then if your software is intuitive enough, they should be able to navigate your software without too much guidance from you. Then you need to decide the expected difficulty level and your channels of interaction. Can the average web user figure out your software or do you need someone who can code? Are you looking to test your software on computers or smartphones specifically? 
These are all important questions when finding your target audience. Once you have your remote testers, it's time to fill them in on the scenario. Let your testers know what their mindset should be up front. There are two different scenario task types, guided and unguided. Guided tasks consist of step-by-step -step instructions guiding your user to a specific point of interest. Unguided tasks consist of one or two total tasks. What you're doing here is leaving your tester as free as possible with an open-ended scenario. These vague instructions force your user to act as they would in a real-life situation. Knowing which type of task sets to use requires you to know what you want to get out of this test. What do you want to learn from the people on the other side of the keyboard? You could guide them through the experience and see where they tumble along the way, or you can let them roam free and see where their thought process takes them. Both are great options, it just depends on which one you need. Now it's time to consider your schedule. While it's nice that you can recruit remote testers from anywhere in the world, it's important to keep in mind the varying time zones. While it may be early afternoon when you send the test, it could be the middle of the night for your remote tester. Take their time zone into account, not yours. As far as timing goes, it takes about 30 minutes to create and test your user test before sending it out. Then, depending on the requirements, it can take anywhere from 10 to 100 minutes for your test to be picked up by a user. The test will ideally take your user anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes to complete, then it will take you 40 to 60 minutes to analyze. Then make sure you allow yourself some extra time to put your results into a presentation for your team. This will make the information you gathered easier for your team to digest. Depending on the complexity of your software, you'll need to conduct testing sessions monthly. For larger companies, you may need 100 to 150 user test sessions every month. But for smaller companies, 40 to 80 monthly sessions is more than enough in most cases. And now they're done. Your remote users have finished your test. When looking at the test results, there are several details about your testers that you should keep in mind as they could drastically affect the outcome of your analysis. Look at your participants' ages. Age can affect their problem-solving capabilities and motor abilities. Their profession is an important factor too, as it adds previous domain knowledge and experience. Their web expertise level can change how they operate the given software. Most people can complete basic online tasks, while others can code or debug websites. Look at their total work hours. The amount of time they were working that day can affect their mental performance. Energy and mood levels go hand in hand with this. How were they feeling before they accepted your test? Were they sad, upset, anxious, or happy? Knowing how they felt is a huge help in analyzing why they made a certain decision. It's also a good idea to use a system usability scale test. It's a quick 10 question test that can be used to accurately benchmark your testers' experiences. Then all of your testers will have comparable scores, making them much easier to analyze. It can also be useful to gather some feedback from your testers. Send out a quick survey and ask specific questions about their experience. Here are some examples. What's one thing you would do to change this site? What did you find most frustrating during this experience? Okay, that was a lot of information. Let's go over it. Remote user testing is a way for you to test out your software using real people. You'll find your groups of users, send them a set of tasks to complete remotely, then you can record and analyze how they went about completing those steps. It's a great way to test the app you're developing or the website you're about to launch. Some pros of conducting research this way is that you get to test on your target audience and they can be tested from anywhere in the world since it can all be done remotely. And once you send out the test, you don't have to worry about it again until your users are done with the test. Plus, sending tests out remotely is way cheaper than trying to get testers in person. Some cons are that you might run into people who are more focused on the incentive you've offered rather than actually completing the test to the best of their ability, and that you may become more focused on the quantitative data rather than qualitative. For most tests, you don't need a massive group of users. Then, when you're ready to actually start remote user testing, focus on clarifying the purpose of your research and identify your target audience.
Then it's time to decide if you will go with a guided or unguided approach to remote user testing. You can either give your user clear cut instructions telling them exactly what to do, or you can give them a broad instructions and observe where their thought process takes them. It's entirely up to you and what kind of research you want to collect. When sending out your tests, be mindful of the varying time zones and what time it is for your user. The entire process of creating and executing remote user testing can take roughly three to four hours. Once your users have completed the tests, it's time for you to find out a bit more information about them. These things can drastically affect how they completed the tests. Data points to take into consideration are age, profession, web expertise level, their local time and space, total work hours, as well as energy and mood levels. All of these factors have an impact on how your users performed during the remote tests. These metrics will help you to better analyze your testers' results. Remote user testing is the best way to go about testing your unique software. You can focus testing on your target audience and use their feedback to improve your product or software. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this video to be helpful. I'm Alex from Jotform. Bye for now.